Hey guys, it's Z. Uh, and today I'm coming back at you with another 20 cards per color I recommend picking up for the Commander format for under $10. Um, at the time of the recording, every card on this list is under $10. And so with that, it's in that affordable price range where, you know, hey, rather than pick up two booster packs, I might pick up this one card that's going to go in my box or going to go in my trade bind or is going to go in my binder or whatever the case is for you and is going to be a long-term card I can build and work around for the rest of my time playing the format. Uh, today we're going to be focusing in on the next 20. We've already covered white if you want to check that out before and that's going to be blue. So in this case, much like we did in the last video, we're going to start from the lower cost cards to the higher cost. That way we can work our way up. Um, starting off, we have a tried and true blue classic in the form of clone. Um, so when it enters the battlefield, it becomes a copy of any creature. What that's going to allow you to do, let's say your opponent has a big, scary, mean, nasty creature. You now have a copy of that mean, nasty, scary creature. Or... If there's a valuable under the battlefield ability that you're trying to get from an opponent's creature that's already on board and they've already received that, well, two can play at that game. Time for you to have it. So it's just a good card in order to kind of build off of. And really, it's a staple effect in blue. There are a couple of different variations of clone, but clone is the tried and true classic. So it's pretty affordable. It's been reprinted a couple times. It's just something to look at. Uh, the next is for the Spell Slinger lovers out there, uh, and that's going to be Talran, Sky Summon. So, whenever you cast an instant or sorcerer spell, you get to put a 2 2 Flying Drake into play. Uh, with that being said, you know, he's a pretty affordable commander. He's been reprinted a couple of times, but even if you're not running him as the commander or the face of your deck, if you're running a deck that wants to run a lot of instant sorceries and you're just casting a. A mana geyser into a lightning bolt into a, uh, into a shock into a draw spell into you know and you're chaining four or five spells at a time this card will go okay cool we've just cast six instants or sorceries let's go ahead and put six drakes into play and even if you can't get there with the instant sorceries by storming off or comboing out they still then have to deal with the threat of flyers in the air that are ready to beat face that came at practically no extra cost to you as a player. So, just something to keep in mind. The next one we have is going to be Raven Form. Um, what's notable about this is, while it is a sorcery, it does exile target artifact or creature in blue. Um, they'll get to get a 1-1 blue bird with flying in response, but ultimately, if you're exiling something that's more of a threat than a 1-1 flying bird, you've done the job of this card. You can also foretell this card for just a single blue mana. And in this little group of 20, I did include a little bit of a foretell package. So that way, you would, if you went ahead and you picked these all up for a deck and went, hey, how do I modify my blue deck? Well, let's throw this package in there. Well, that way they can't just go, oh, it's always this card when you foretell something. In this case, it gives you a little bit of that flexibility to be able to go, hey, it's one of three cards. Which one is it? So, just makes them, it throws them off a little bit. Speaking of our little uh, foretell package, we have Saw It Coming, Counter Target Spell, Plain Jane Simple. So, it's one in double blue in order to cast normally, or you can foretell it for one in a blue. Uh, or well, you pay two to foretell, and then you pay one in a blue to cast from foretell. But the point is, it's part of that foretell package we're going to include, or that we have here. So that way you can go, uh, is it the Raven form? Is the Sot coming? Or is there a third card in the list? And that's going to be a little bit further down, um, just to kind of let you know. So don't quite think you're getting to it quite yet. The next card we've got is Reconnaissance Mission. So whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card, and it can cycle itself away. So in this case, uh, blue is very good with evasive creatures, things with unblockable, things with, sh uh, things with Skulk. When Skulk was around, it was one of the good colors at it. Um, but it also is very good at unblockable in general. 
So when these creatures will deal combat damage, with them being evasive, it's very easy to do so. It allows you to draw cards. It's a coastal piracy effect. It's one of those staple things that Blue has been doing for a while, and it's a very good budgetary draw spell, uh, especially if you're playing like maybe green in your deck as well, where you can reliably trample over things. And if you don't need the massive draw power, you pay two mana, cycle it, and try to get another card in your hand. So, just something to keep in mind. Um, our next card down the list is going to be uh, kind of a kind of a defensive board wipe in the form of Aetherize. So, return all attacking creatures to their owner's hands. So, it could be used to protect yourself. It could be used to protect somebody else at the table politically. Um, or it could just be, yeah, that threat's very, very nasty. And while it's not a danger to me right now, give it a turn or two and it will be. Let's reset that. I can't have you have all that. And it's a very reliable way to do that at four mana, three and a blue. So instant speed. With that, it's pretty affordable. It's pretty cheap in comparison to some of the other instant speed board wipes, which are commonly seen at like six and seven. So our next card is just a tried and true blue classic from back in the day. And that's Counterspell. Two blue, to counter target spell. I don't want to see it. Don't. If you're playing blue, you might as well have it. it it's the quintessential blue card for a lot of people. Um, yeah, it's why blue's kind of got its reputation. But at the same time, having that tool for the job before the tool or before the the thing you don't want to see ever hits the board is very helpful. So, the next card we've got on our list is Mystic Confluence. So, it's a 5 mana instant. Choose 3. You may choose the same mode more than once. So, that's kind of a thing. Uh, you counter target spell unless its controller pays 3 mana. Return target creature to its owner's hand and draw a card. So, it could be counter target spell, draw 2 cards. It could be counter target spell, bounce 2 permanents. It could be... Bounce a permanent, draw two cards. There's a couple of ways that this card can go. And for such versatility, for everything it does, for, you know, instant speed, I think it's a pretty solid pickup. Uh, is it the mainstay take all comers perfect counterspell in the format? No, but we're not spending $8,200 on counterspells. This card will suffice for what we need it to do. Uh, our next one is going to be Pongify. Destroy target creature, they get a 3 3 8. Um, so, one thing you'll kind of notice with blue is the removal options tend to be more so focused in the realm of bouncing permanents rather than destroying permanents. And so, in this case, we did include a couple of removal spells that just straight destroy. Um, and it's kind of notable because, for the most part, um, Watsi's approach on this here lately from what we've been seeing publicly is that they're trying to shy away from these effects. They don't really like them. They don't feel it's what they want Blue to be doing anymore. So I recommend picking them up now rather than before they become $15 cards. Um, these are cards that realistically don't see reprints as often as I would like. I know for Pongify it took a long, long time for it to get reprinted. So at least in my perception. Um, obviously, it may not have been that long, but you know, when you've sold out of the game a couple of times, bought back into it, and you're looking to pick up some of these like old staple cards like Pongify and all that, that you used to have, you consider to be a core part of your collection and then just no longer have, you know, that's what this kind of comes from. This is where I'm getting my advice from. So the next card we have is going to be a large burst draw spell in the form of Blue Sun Zenith. Um, it's instant X3, uh, 3 blue specifically. Target player draws X number of cards, shuffle Blue Sun Zenith into its library, into your library. So basically, you'll cast it, you'll get to shuffle it back in. So it's a reusable draw spell that's also going to just burst draw you a bunch of cards. So that's not a bad thing. Ultimately, I think that will help it, you know, become a lot more of a viable thing you can do. Um, because sometimes you do need to have a, con a source of just that burst card draw. 
rather than the long-term grindy type card draw that other cards notably that are more expensive and would not be on this list talking about heuristic study would kind of contain so just something to keep in mind we get to the, and from here this is where we get to that third part of our foretell package mystic reflection choose target non-legendary creature the next time one or more creatures or planeswalkers enter the battlefield this turn they enter as copies of the chosen creature so the funny the fun thing is this is an instant so this can be used on your opponent's turn so uh, this card has just got a lot of versatility to it I, honestly when Kaldheim came out there was so much speculation of oh you can do this into that into this into that um, and ultimately I know one of the big things I've seen a lot of people want to try to do is combine this with commanders like Essex uh, Fractal Bloom and do, combine it with things like an Avenger of Zendikar and just go to town that way um, but there are other fun flavorful applications that you know you just kind of have to experience for your meta because the card is so versatile it's one of those I just can't provide you enough examples so just something to keep in mind there with that card so after Mystic Reflection on our list we're going to go ahead and move it on down to the Dalkin Archmage uh, the Dalkin Archmage 4 mana 0 2 the Dalkin um, but what he's going to do is whenever you cast an artifact spell you'll get to draw a card he is a wizard in case you care about the wizard synergies but more so he's here for the artifact synergy hey uh, I'm going to go ahead and cast my 0 mana you know mana rock draw a card okay um, so free draw power is never a bad thing especially when you can reliably trigger it so it's just something to keep in mind um, the next card on our list is going to be arcane denial it's going to be another counter spell but this is a counter spell without the traditional field ads it's going to counter target spell and then whoever spell you counter gets to draw two cards at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep However, you also get to draw a card beginning in the next turn's upkeep. So it replaces itself for you, and for them losing their spell, they get to draw two. So they're a little bit less upset that you countered the big thing. At least in theory. Um, different people play that card differently. Different people have different impressions when the things are countered. So just kind of keep an eye out. Um, our next card as we're scrolling down the blue list here is going to be Archmage Emeritus. This is going to be our Magecrafty boy from Strixhaven. He's a 2 mana 2-2, two, two, or I'm sorry, he's a 4 mana 2-2. Two, two, uh, 2 and a blue, or 2 and 2 blue. If I can speak properly, that probably helps. Um, human Wizard, whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery, you get to draw a card. So, again, it comes back down to like the Archmage we talked about before, where you cast an, an artifact, draw a card. In this case... We're doing the same thing except with incense and sorcery. So, cast a ponder for one mana, draw a card, get the effect for ponder. Go ahead and brainstorm, draw a card, get the look at the top three. With so many cantrips being in blue, this card is just an engine to draw yourself yourself a bunch of cards for very very affordable. So, it's just a card that I think is worth having in decks that. While they're not going to be running it specifically for its, I'm going to draw 25 cards in a turn, they may be running it in terms of, hey, if I draw four or five cards throughout the game because I run a high density of incidents and sorceries, then I'm probably doing, this card is probably getting its four mana value out, then, you know, it's still worth having. So the next card we have is going to be Windfall. Sometimes cards in your hand are just not good enough. Or sometimes you just need a restock. So what Windfall says is each player will discard their hand, then draws cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. So let's say you're down to two cards in hand, opponent one has three cards in hand, opponent four has seven, and opponent six has three. Well, because opponent uh, because one of your opponents is going to be discarding seven, that means everyone gets to have a full grip. Um, Combined with the other cards, that makes you a monster, but <laughs> um, 
I, I playfully say that, but it, there are some decks that will notably use these effects in a very negative manner. So, it's just something to keep in mind. But, in this case, primarily, it's just an effect where it's going to give you a way to refuel your hand and try to gain you a little bit of political favor at the table as well. Um, and notice I do put a little bit of an emphasis on politics. It's because we're in a multiplayer format. Um, if it was just a standard 1v1 format, I don't necessarily have to, hey, I won't attack you if you let me do this, versus in a four-player table. It's a lot more manageable to do that. It's a lot more feasible, and realistically, it means the game's a lot more social. And, and that's kind of the big thing, or the big draw for me. So the next card on our list is going to be Biden Thassa. It's another one of these coastal piracy type effects that also have the benefit of one blue tap. Creatures your opponents control attack this turn if able. So in this case, it does give you all the capability in the world to make this card, or to make your opponent swing into somebody else or swing into an open, open board and leaves them exposed for an attack as well. Or it can force them into an unfavorable attack where, hey, all my stuff's got death touch or is bigger than you or indestructible. You have to attack into me so I can wipe your creatures off. Uh, and that can be an option as well. So just something to keep in mind. Um, our next card on the list is going to be a 5 mana cost instant evacuation. Return all creatures to their owner's hands. So it's a board wipe in blue that, again, Blue doesn't really remove a bunch of things, so what it does is it bounces a bunch of things. And because it bounces, they can make these a little bit more affordable than they could if it was just a straight removal. So it's going to bounce them all to, your, all, all to everybody's hands. Um, while it's not a Cyclonic Rift, Cyclonic Rift's expensive. Evacuation's under $10. So it's a card that is just worth considering if you're actually working on building up your collection. The next card on our list is going to be Rapid Hybridization. Again, it's another kill spell. Destroy target creature, its controller puts a 3-3 three, three, uh, Frog Lizard into play. Green Frog Lizard. So, in this case, it's a blue kill spell that at one mana instant speed. So, it's just something that will help you kind of get the job done and... When blue doesn't have a lot of the same, when blue does not have a lot of the resources to be able to do that job, it's worth having that in the toolbox. Um, our next card is going to be propaganda. Much like ghostly prison, creatures you can't attack you unless their their con creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature he or she controls that's attacking you. So basically. Again, kind of like I talked about um, on our previous one, uh, realistically, the way propaganda is going to do for you is it's going to be a matter of, hey, don't attack me, it's going to take you two mana. Further your board state, or hey, attack this person instead, because you don't have to pay to attack them, you just have to pay to attack me. So, you know, it just gives you that option available to you. Uh, our last and final card here is going to be Trickbind. So, Trickbind's a little bit of an interesting one, so just stick with me here. It has split second, which means as long as the spell is on the stack, while it's resolving, or all that, players can't play spells or uh, activate abilities that aren't mana abilities. Um, so what that kind of means for you is they're not going to be able to tap, activate, and effect in response to this unless it's a mana ability. They can't counter into the trick bind while it's on the stack. They kind of have to let trick bind do its thing. And what it says is counter target activated or triggered ability. If a permanent's ability is countered this way, activated abilities cannot be played this turn. So basically, um, somebody goes. Basically, if somebody goes in and are going to tap a creature to give something unblockable just as an example. You can go Trick Bind, counter the ability. So they will not be able to use that ability again to make it try to make it unblockable again. And, notably, it's going to counter that ability. So it's still going to be able to be blocked. 
Now, this can stop into the battlefield triggers. Um, this can stop when a creature dies triggers, things like that. Um, so, interestingly, if you're playing like an aristocrats player who's running a lot of sacrifice loops, you can go and they try to go, okay, cool, finish off my loop, I'm going to bring back a merciless executioner. Everybody's going to sack a creature. You can go, you're irresponsible, trick behind that. No, no, we're not doing that again. Sorry, we're done. And you can stop that effect. So, under $10, it's a pretty decent effect. Um, and it's worth, it's a tool that's worth having in the toolbox. But that's been our blue selection of cards that are under $10 that I recommend picking up for Commander or at least having available to you in some fashion. If there are any other blue cards you can think of that are below $10 that fall into this category, let me know in the description below. Again, we want to have an open discussion here just because at the end of the day, first of all, I'm no, I'm no master of the format. It's not like I am the end-all, be-all dictator. And at the same time, it's also one of those, the format's heavily decided by your metas and by just how serious y'all decide to take it. So while these cards might have use for me, they may not for you, just let me know below. Um, that way we can all kind of come together as a community and figure out some more things. But in the meantime, this has been Z, and I hope y'all have a good one. Take care and stay safe.